cars are the foundation of music lyrically you know baby baby drive my car right yeah <laughs> yeah why is that why are cars the centerpiece of of so much that happens musically Oh, it started so long ago with the songs like, you know, Rocket 88, you know, with uh, everything Chuck Berry ever wrote. So it's always been at the foundation of lyrics and rock and roll. And obviously, car, drive my car. These are all metaphors and euphemism. For so, um, it's just a way you could talk about it without getting censored, you know. Good point. My, my Rocket 88, you know, drive my car. I mean, come on, man. You know, it's the cars even did that song. <laughs> you know, all of Chuck Berry's Cadillacs, you know, he was obsessed with Cadillacs. And it's all about, uh, you know, big cars that uh, that are fun to drive. Oh, I love it. That's so good. That's so good. You're a guitar guy, too. A huge guitar guy. And in fact, uh, we have to go back to the 1960s in Southern California. And you go down to the music store, you're 12 years old, you're on the number nine bus, paying a quarter for that bus ride, and you're thinking about guitars, right? <laughs> wow, you've, re- you've done your homework. I, I, uh, it's exactly what I used to do. So there was a, a string of uh, music shops and pawn shops in Santa Monica, and I would go there every weekend, Saturday morning, right before opening time. I'd be down there by 10 a.m., I'd go eat some French fries and some drink a Coke at D's coffee shop. Then I'd start making my rounds. Uh, I would just go from one pawn shop to another, Ace, Pawn and Loan, uh, to Bay City Music, to Cunningham Music, to another pawn shop, finishing the day at the flagship Santa Monica Ace Music up on Santa Monica at about 7th Street. And I cannot tell you how intoxicating that was for a kid um more intoxicating than the alley of tom ray pontiac and uh <laughs> i i just looked at these you know guitars from the florida ceiling on on three walls and a big window in front and amps all over the ground laid out real nice and i wasn't really much of a guitar player yet but i wanted to be and i just was fascinated with the guitars themselves And the older guys that would come in to play them. I would just like be, you know, a fly on the wall all day long. And yeah, I bought my first vintage guitar there, which was an old Telecaster. Um, And uh, that got stolen in short order, unfortunately. But my second guitar I also bought there was a 1968 brand new Gibson Les Paul gold top. Mm. And uh, man, I love that guitar. And uh, yeah, that was my thing, man. Ace music on a Saturday with all the other ones thrown in. You still have the 1959 Les Paul standard as well? I sure do. Uh, well, I have my first great Les Paul after that first vintage Les Paul I bought in 73. That's a 1957 gold top Les Paul original uh, with humbuckings, of course. I still do have that. And that's the guitar I played uh, every show with Etta James on. Etta, right. Yeah, you said that guitar was road hard and put away wet. Oh, my God. Yeah, that thing looks like <laughs> it looks like Keith Richards' dad. It's just like <laughs> it, it is definitely road hard and put away wet. 